hi everyone and welcome back to couples confession this is our last video from the series and if you haven't seen the other ones please check out a link above me somewhere and then check them all out because they're all super super juicy in this one we're gonna answer questions like how did you know he or she was the one and how did you feel about moving in together and all sorts of things so you might want to see this one too if you're on the verge of moving in together with your partner or if you want to prepare for that moment i'm super excited i'm gonna ask my husband to step in and i cannot wait to see what you think of it please let me know in a comment below and I'm a success coach at rosvitaherman.com and every single week I help women to be more successful in every area of their life happiness health wealth yeah. and <clears throat> our last couple's confessions so <laughs> Mihai the first question is for you when did you know that Rosvita was the one what made you consider that my goodness guys <laughs> And now I wish I should, I would have read these questions beforehand. <laughs> Too late. Um, I don't know, maybe, I believe it was after we graduated. Okay. And uh, we started our own business. And we started living together even more than we did before. And I don't know. I believe I felt adult enough to, to and think why about would that. He, how did you think? How were you? Were you sure? That I never had anyone else to compare you with. <laughs> oh, I feel so good right now. <laughs> no, but I believe we have a special connection. Aww, I that's did. so sweet. I did. Mm -hmm. I did too. Okay, that's why we lasted so long. That is true. Well, the next few questions are for me, and here they go. How did you know he's the one you wanted to spend the, the rest of your life with? How and when did you know that he was the one that you were ready to be in for the good and the bad? So just a disclosure, I didn't know I was going to be in for the bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I expected to be in only for the good. But um, the universe works in mysterious ways, and just after we got married, the bad has hit us really bad. <laughs> if, so I had to be in for the long run. Uh, how did I know that he was the one? Well, uh, first, well. <laughs> <laughs> we've been together for so long, but that's not, that, that should not be a reason to marry someone just because you've been together for so long. So if that's the only reason, like, no, no, definitely not. But we did have so many things in common. So we had a business in common. We had multiple businesses in common so we worked together since college on multiple mm -hmm. businesses and we tried different things and we were really really best friends mm -hmm. like there was no one else especially not in the be beginning not, 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 not when we were in high school but as we grew older like in college we really became each other's confidence and best best friends and there was like i would have things to share with my girlfriends but he was the one that i would share things with like he was like my partner, not just boyfriend, but also like family. It was something different. Okay. So I think um, that's nice. I think it's very important to for your partner or the one that you want to spend the rest of your life with to be really, really good friends, best friends. Like I do not talk about other people with anybody else but my husband. Like I do not, you know, when we discuss about things or ideas or our deepest dreams, he's the only one I talk about. Yes, I do talk with my best friends, most of it, but he's the one I really talk about. And if you have that openness and that communication, then you know that that person is the one you want to really have it every single day. So we're best friends, we're roommates, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we are business partners. So we were way more than just a couple. And I, I see a lot of couples who are just a couple. They just been together for long, they just, you know, move on because they have nobody else to be with. And that's not enough of a reason. So you really have to have something strong that connects you. And that's how I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him because as I said, he was my best friend. He was my business partner. Like 
how lucky was I to have everything in one person? So of course, you know, it was way more than just. Aww. I know you love me. <laughs> um, and when was I ready to be in for the good and the bad? So when he first told me, like I think in 2015, you mm -hmm. mentioned at, at some point. Year. Yeah, you mentioned some point that hey, I talked to my parents mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of proposing this year, and I was like, holy moly, I did <laughs> not prepare for that because in my mind I had like this expectation so I was hoping that we would be in such a good place financially and with our businesses that he would be able to afford the diamond ring like just like that and only then I would go in to marry him because you know like women we kind of see the man as the provider so we expect to have a strong man to provide for us so I was like okay, would you have money to buy me a ring? Or do we have money to pay for a wedding? And he's like, well, hmm. I, he said like, I'm really ready to marry you and we'll figure everything out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I need the numbers. <laughs> but, you know, life happened. We did start to plan our wedding in 2015 and we got engaged 1st of January, 2016. So it took a while for him to acquire this one, but it's gorgeous. So it's, it's, it was worth the wait. So, as I said, I was not prepared for it, but I just was like, okay, we'll get used to it. And I definitely did not expect bad things to happen right away. So we all expect to get married, to be happy, for our life to go, you know, like not perfectly, but pretty good. And then after we got married and he got sick, all of my dreams kind of were ruined for a couple of months because I didn't know what was going on and why is this happening to us. So there were a lot of frustration, a lot of depression, a lot of, you know, really, really not so great things, but it only pushed me to really reinforce what we have and really become a very, very strong person. So you're never going to be ready for the bad things. That's why you should not necessarily consider them. But when life puts you, puts them in front of you, you just know that it's now or never. <laughs> So it really gets you stronger. And couples who did not, who do not go through hard times, they don't really know how much they love each other or mm -hmm. how much they do not love each other. Because I think life is testing you all the time. Plus you need to believe that whatever the universe or God or whatever you believe in puts in your life, you can handle it. Even though it feels like a lot, it mm -hmm. feels overwhelming, you, you, you feel desperate or you panic at times mm -hmm. you have to truly have faith that you it happens for a reason and that best, you can handle it for your best interest and you might not see it right away like i did not see the results like in a month or in not even two months after i see mm, the results <laughs> in like eight months regarding you know how powerful i became but then with his health in almost two years mm -hmm. we started to see the why and how he changed and also so you really have to be patient and have that faith so cultivate faith i don't care in what you believe in if it's god if it's the universe if it's angels if it's i don't but you need to cultivate that faith that there's a higher power all around us and that the universe is here to help you out and to guide you to become the person you want to become because you have asked for it doesn't matter the means of how you're going to become that person just trust that that's the fastest fastest way for you to become that person. So I hope I answered the question. Uh, another question for me, how did you feel when he proposed? Well, since, as you probably know, if you've been watching me for a while, I'm a kind of a control freak. I'm still oh, working wow. on it, really? but I'm kind of a control freak. And uh, I knew he kind of bought the ring because I picked the ring with him. So we bought the ring around, I think December. Mm -hmm. And with the shipping and everything, I was expecting him to propose on Christmas. That was like my ideal thing or to be something major event. And I knew the shipping would, would take a long time and with, you know, like all the holidays. And, and I was super disappointed that I'm not going to get a big event for my engagement after I waited for so long to get engaged because we already had made plans for our wedding. And then the wedding date was booked already. The wedding, so. yeah, the wedding date was booked. We had like photo, photo, photographers booked, like a lot of things were already done. And then we went away to uh, Vienna in Austria for like uh, after the Christmas holidays mm -hmm. to spend our New Year's Eve there. 
and I I definitely had no idea he will propose there because there was no way. I was lucky that the ring came faster and then earlier. Than yeah, and he, met, and he yeah. managed to you know switch the shipping address mm -hmm. to where we stayed. That everything was done. You know, like it was kind of like a gamble, but it worked out. <laughs> yeah. So after New Year's Eve, he and my friend they were like, let's go and have some you know walk into the, this palace, Schönbrunn, and I'm like, I don't feel like going anywhere, I was already kind of disappointed how, because it was 2016 and I haven't gotten engaged <laughs> yet, and, and then, Facebook was full of new engagement, oh my god, everybody got engaged on New Year's Eve, only yeah. I didn't, or on Christmas, <laughs> on Christmas the same thing, I all, you can imagine the pressure, <laughs> the frustration that I had, I was like, oh, when will I get engaged already? So then he surprised me there and it was such a wonderful surprise. I didn't notice until an hour after because we would take photos of me and he would hold the ring, but I had no idea because he would hold the ring behind my back or something. And everybody around us knew and people were laughing and clapping. And I was like, what's going on? I don't get it. Why do they stare at us? Like, am I dressed funny or... yeah? Are, it was, are they so in love? I don't know. It was just so weird. And then at the end, when we got up in Schönbrunn, we... Uh, he actually proposed and it was such a magical thing and I cried and I... But how did you find out? Uh, how did I feel about... No, how did you find out about... The ring? The ring. So, uh, after we got up, you know, they didn't let me see the pictures. Because, you know, after you take pictures, you want actually to see how you look in the pictures. And they wouldn't let me do that. Like, no, we're gonna go up and then we're gonna sit there, have a cup of tea, and then we're gonna look at the pictures. And I'm like okay like whatever the day sucks already so. <laughs> uh and then we got up and then i started looking at the pictures and you know how you look at pictures you zoom in you zoom out to see how your face looks like and he would be and she so went fun. through 30 pictures until she reached the first one with the ring and then the i ring. saw the what is he holding there and i was like no way no way no way and then when i turn turn around he was on his knee and he proposed and uh, he was very nervous. Like he wouldn't, oh he forgot God. to put the ring on my finger. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put it on my finger. It's okay. <laughs> and I was so well. happy with the ring and how it looked. And it was like just the, the best thing ever. And um, I definitely felt surprised, which is very hard for somebody to surprise me since I control every detail and I like to control details. But lately, I've been more... Yeah, but you need to accept that some people are better than you. Yeah, you're becoming... <laughs> I, I've, you know, he studied me for so long that now he's actually... <laughs> but yeah, it was really amazing. Even though I knew we were going to get engaged one day, hopefully soon, but it still was very a big, big surprise. Um, did you get cold feet in your relationship? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, mm -hmm. again, we've been together for so long. Of course, we had arguments of all sorts of things before we got married, but it was never a big argument to be in conflict. We had no arguments after we got married. No. <laughs> it was not no conflict in regards to our values. So I think as long as both of you have the same values in life, all the fights or conflicts that appear, they're just temporary or they're just small things to work on. But if you have like big values that you, like for example, what you believe in, how do you want to raise your kids, how do you want to live your life, like big things that are always, always going to come up, then that might be an issue. So the, I, I strongly suggest before people get married, they do go to therapy, to couples therapy, and they really work out their values, how they see their life in 10 years, what they want from each other. It's so important to know that before you really get into this contract, that it's a contract and it's not... It does affect you emotionally when you, you know, break that contract. So it's better to do your due diligence, just like you're buying a house or you're buying a car. I mean, it's normal to check, will I like it? Is it good? Is it, you know, not just go for it because it's shiny or it's the, somebody said it's the best thing ever or I just need to rush into it. So really, really make the best decision for you. Moving on for Mihai, these questions are for Mihai especially. How did you feel about moving in together? I don't know. I mean, you see all these things in TV shows, like Friends, with the guy being so anxious about moving in together, but I never had that. Never had that. You were never scared. Mm -mm. I was looking forward to it, so... Mm. Why? I don't 
know. I, I was just not anxious about moving in together. Or We're not. Felt like I'm losing something or I'm losing my world. No. We were pretty grown ups even when we were really young because we had to be. We had so much responsibility with our businesses and with our big dreams. So we were not just like playing kids. Mm -hmm. We really knew what we wanted. We were very focused on what we wanted, even in our relationship, but also in our business, in our personal life. So then we just went to get it. Plus, two is always better than one. So together, we were always this force that we just had more power and more energy and more confidence. And just we just. Went and we to lived together for the summers when we were younger. Yeah, in so, college. Yeah. The first time we moved in together, so I was So that meant 19. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we spent every summer in college to living together. And then we spent the last year of college living together. And then uh, in the third year of college, I would also come weekends and live mm -hmm. with you because he moved in a different apartment. And then I would go from Thursday till Sunday and live with you. So we kind of lived together on and off for years before we so finally... So the change was not that big, probably yeah. that was... <clears throat> that way, that's why it was easier. That was... Yeah, we already sorted our problems about moving in together mm -hmm. before we moved in together. Like, you know, sharing chores or who's gonna cook or who does that and it was probably easier. How do you make up after a fight? That's for me again. I think we can both... Yeah. How do I make up after a fight? I journal <laughs> <laughs> to get out the frustrations and the, the things he cannot tell me. That he yeah, cannot, all he the, doesn't want to tell me. All the bad. things my ego is telling me. So, mm -hmm. and usually after I do that, I can see things more clearly, and I can see her point of view, and that's when uh, comes the biggest part to actually step on my ego and go kiss her or make a dumb joke or go buy flowers or yeah to kind of release that tension that's true well for the first big part of our relationship i could not step on my ego mm. <laughs> tell me about it i would not i would not want to be the one to come and kiss him after if i'm like no he has to come and get me which was not I'm a princess. Not really. Mm -hmm. Really. Really? Really. No. Really. Okay. I learn new things about myself every day. But I'm not that person anymore. No. So you do change in time. And now I think journaling also I, I kind of do journaling after we fight to see okay why did we get into this big fight like what it really is the issue because I'm sure that not that's not the issue. Maybe there's something underlying and then, you know, I find, you know, I get more compassion for him. And then, you know, we both now make jokes and mm -hmm. share the kissing part. So it's not, it's no longer a My contest. Because mm -hmm. in the past, it was a contest. Who's going to last more? Mm -hmm. And I always felt like I had to win because I have to win in everything that I do. <laughs> and then I think it was an ego contest. So if you are, if you are how I used to be for so long then I get you, don't worry. <laughs> but you're not happy doing that. I wasn't happy doing that. I was just like... You're doing more harm to yourself in yeah. the end. So. so just accept that it's not a contest. You do not need to be the stronger one who does not give up after a fight or something. You just need to focus on love and what you have together because that is the most precious thing you have and it's more important than your ego. And once you realize that, I had to go through really big hardships to really realize that, which I do not recommend for everybody. So if you don't <laughs> want to go there, just realize that what you have together is more important than any ego or any personal like contest to win. And once you do that, like things will just work easier. Because now we still fight, but we don't, we no longer really fight that bad. And when we do, maybe like once a trimester, when we have like a big, big fight, like last for two days, then our relationship always moves to a new level, mm -hmm. always gets better. It's just like a valve to express tension and, you know, and then things calm down and we love each other more. So it's good to fight. Just don't make it a you hobby. Tension, yeah. You do release tension. Just 
journal before you want to say something so just try to learn something from each fight i believe that's the most important thing. exactly because nothing happens without a reason okay it's a wrap this video then please subscribe also don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends or a couple <laughs>